Hello. This presentation gives a brief introduction to the helium pycnometry, a method we use to measure skeletal volume and density. So what is density? We were taught that it's simply the mass of an object divided by its volume. And this is an easy definition. However, American Society for Testing and Materials book uh, has more than 14, 40 definitions of density. And British Standards Institute gives 14 types of densities. Determining the mass of an object is a rather straightforward task. However, defining volume of a sample may be difficult. The volume of a solid object, whether it's a single piece or powder, is one of those concepts that cannot be summarized in a single definition. Here you can see an illustration of various volume types. At the top left, there is a container of individual particles illustrating the characteristic of bulk volume in which interparticles and external voids are included. At the top right <coughs> is a single porous particle from the bulk. The particle cross section, section is shown, so it's surrounded by the envelope. In the illustrations in the bottom, Black areas uh, shown are uh, analogous to volume. Three illustration at the right represent the particle. Illustration A is the volume within the envelope. Envelope volume B is the same volume minus the external volume and volume of open pores. And C is the volume within the envelope minus both open and closed pores. So volume definition really depends uh, on what void space you want to include. We have interparticle void, external void, open and closed pore spaces, and also volume of solid material. And we can define volume of either a single particle or bulk material or uh, volume of powder. And it all depends on the application and analytical methods used. Helium pycnometry measures uh, particle skeletal volume, which includes uh, material volume and also volume of the closed pores. Helium typically is a gas of choice because it uh, easily diffuses into small pores. Helium pycnometer works by measuring the amount of gas displaced by a sample. The sample is loaded into a sample chamber of known volume. Then the analysis gas is introduced. The gas molecules are rapidly filling the chamber, including tiny pores of a sample. The difference between volume of helium of empty chamber and this new introduced helium volume is equal to the sample solid phase volume. We measure pressure in the sample chamber and then the gas is released into second chamber. And we measure this pressure as well. This allows us to calculate sample volume. Then, knowing sample mass, you can calculate the density. Here is an application example. Density of plastic film was studied. This type of film is produced by extruding polyethylene beads through various types of machines. The quality of the extruded film greatly depends on structure of the beads and the amount of encapsulated air in them. This table shows the skeletal density of some beads. Sample D had a lowest density compared to other samples, and also it had the poorest processing properties, probably due to larger amount of encapsulated air. Therefore, it has the lowest density of all sample. Also, samples of extruded films were evaluated. These types of materials cure with time and temperature, and the density increases. With increasing density, high degree of crystallinity, the film becomes more brittle and loses its impact strength. The density measurement confirmed that sample B, which has the highest density, was more brittle and subject to tearing compared to other films. Such data uh, give a researcher simple tests to give uh, to guide um, the curing process. Another example illustrates how the percent solids of a slurry can be calculated. Analysis were performed on samples of varying percentages of solids, and the density of dry material was also measured. As shown in the table, the measured percent mm, solids of a slurry 
uh, was in good agreement with percent of solids calculated from the mass balance. So if you know the density of a solid and the density of, of the liquid, or you can measure them by pycnometer, you can calculate the percent of solids in a slurry using the equation shown above. To summarize, uh, helium pycnometry provides uh, easy and fast measurements. Uh, we can measure samples in different state and size. Uh, and also this method gives you excellent reproducibility and accuracy. However, there is a few disadvantages. Some bulk specimens can be too large to fit into the sample cup. Uh, sample need to fill at least two thirds of a cup for quality results. And this could be a problem if you have very little sample. Also, very uh, soft gel-like materials can be deformed by helium, but introduce helium pressure. Applications include ceramics and powder metallurgy, coatings and films, plastic, organic chemicals and polymers, and slurries. And this is specification of our helium pycnometer, and you can uh, look into more details at our website. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. And you can submit training or analysis requests uh, at our website.